today I'd like to uh, call to order the meeting of the Bedford Township Planning Commission. This is a regular meeting. It is December 14, 2022. It is 7 o'clock. If we could stand up and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, Mr. Covrett, can you do the roll call? Yes, uh, Mr. Helm. Here. Mr. Covrett is here. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Mahoney. Here. And then excused, Mr. Lamkowski, Mr. Fritz, and Mr. Swain. Okay, approval of the agenda. Does everybody have a chance to look at the agenda? Motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, on to item five, set the dates and times for the 2023 Planning Commission meetings. <clears throat> Everybody get the uh, calendar in their packet. Any questions? Okay. Make a motion to approve the proposed meeting schedule as presented. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Item six, appoint the Planning Commission representative to the Board of Zoning Appeals. I nominate Brad Helm. Support. Okay, you want to call the roll, Mr. Covert? Um Yes. We have to have Mr. Helm accept the nomination. Oh, I accept the nomination. Good. And Mr. Kovrat, can you call the roll? Mr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Kovrat votes aye. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Helm. Aye. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Okay, item seven, approval of the minutes from October 26, 2022. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Kovrat. I do have one clarification. Um, it says, I, I was absent, uh, or excuse that meeting, but it says I called the roll. So if we could... Uh, Somehow adjust that to whoever did, and that'd be great. That's the only clarification I have. Okay. Okay, with that one change, is there a motion to accept the minutes as submitted? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes with the minor amendment. Second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Okay, item eight, public comment. This is limited to three minutes. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to make a comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to item nine, new business. Open the public hearing regarding the request from Mr. Robert and Jacqueline Stoiber for a special approval for a pond in an ag agricultural zoning district on parcel number 5802. Dash zero one one dash zero three six dash two zero, otherwise known as thirty West Erie Road, Temperance, Michigan four eight one eight two. This time I'll open the public hearing. Motion to open public hearing. Support. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. There's nobody in the audience that'd like to speak. You have a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close public hearing. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Okay. Um would the you like to read? Um the applicants are Robert and Jacqueline Stober, thirty West Erie, Temperance, Michigan, parcel number five eight zero two zero one one zero three six two zero for a um, final site plan and special approval. Plan date was 5-12 of 2022, updated on 11-7-2022, agriculturally zoned on five acres. The applicant is requesting special approval and final site plan approval to install an approximate 0.45 acre pond on a five acre agriculturally zoned parcel located on West Erie Road per section 
251.006 location of ponds, agriculturally zoned districts require a parcel of land not less than five acres in size. The submitted site plan shows the proposed location of the pond to be installed behind the north of the new home, which is still under construction. Design requirements as designed, the proposed pond exceeds the required setback of 50 feet of the property lines and the proposed dwelling. The plan indicates the high water elevation of 624.5 normal ground water, water is located at an elevation of 623.5 with an estimated low water level of 623. As noted in the Mannequin Smith's review letter, the basis of determination for the high and low average water level should be notated on the plan. The pond will be utilized for the landowner's personal recreational purposes and all spoils from the excavation will be redistributed on site as filling around the existing home. Two safety stations are being proposed which meets the intent of the ordinance, one located on the northwest end and one to the southeast of the proposed pond. The applicant should verify each safety station will have 100 feet of rope to meet the requirements of the ordinance. All disturbed areas are to be finally graded, planted with grass seed and maintained as necess necessary until vegetation has been established. As well, the pond should be kept in healthy by natural convection and the addition of aquatic life. The Bedford Township Fire Department has reviewed and approved the access drive to the pond area in case of an emergency. Um, that has been discussed and that would like clarification to be notated on the plan as well, clearly defined where that access drive back to the pond is. Approvals have been received from the Mannequin Smith Group with comments and conditions on 1123 and the Bedford Township Fire Department on 1115. A pond permit must be obtained through the building department prior to beginning the pond construction. A soil erosion control permit has been obtained from the New York County Drain Commission and the Eagle permit was issued on 119 of 2022. Should special approval and final site plan approval be granted, a motion should include that the approval shall be contingent upon addressing all comments in the Mannequin Smith and the Bedford Township Fire Department letters of approval meeting all requirements of the Monroe County Drain Commission in regards to soil erosion and sedimentation control, and EGLE, and per section 251.015, upon completion of work, two sets of final as-builts be submitted, and that is per ordinance. Okay, thank you. Would Mr. and Mrs. Soiber mind coming up to the microphone? This time I have to advise you we are three board members short and there's four of us here and it's going to require a unanimous vote among the four that are present. Do you want us to continue? Sure. Okay, thanks. Is there anything you want to add to what Ms. Uh, Rector read? No, I think that was uh, accurate. I think all of the requirements of the ordinance are uh, met. It's been uh, revised and reviewed. The design has. So I think everything is uh, satisfactory to the requirements of Bed Bedford Township. Okay, does anybody on the commission have a question for the Stoibers? Mr. Kovrat. Uh, on the uh, front page there of your summary, Jody, um, it says the applicant should verify each safety station will have 100 feet of rope to meet the requirements of the ordinance. Has that been verified? I did not see it notated on the plan, so that's why we requested maybe the applicant could verify um, that there is a hundred feet of rope on each safety station uh, With the construction of the pond there will be a hundred feet of rope on each safety station. Okay. Thank you um, The only other question I have right now um, Does this require two motions or can one motion if we want to go that direction? I'd like it to be two motions uh, the first motion would be the uh, special use in the Planning Commission uh, finding that uh, all of the criteria uh, have, have been met uh, as shown by Jody in uh, the uh, packet. The principal use is permitted and then there's finding that the use is not injurious to the district environs, all those things. So if it meets those criteria, uh, then you can move on to the site plan because the site plan is something I suppose someday a future could be asked for an amendment or something without having to amend the special use approval. So it makes sense to have them in separate motions. Thank you. Anybody else have any other questions? Mr. Uh, Steiner. Ms. Rector, have you, have you received the two sets of plans with all the changes? Those will be as final as built once the pond is constructed and the um, Pond has been approved by the building official, then the engineer would need to um, design it as built because we know once dirt is being moved and disturbed, 
elevations may change a little bit. And then what happens is if a new owner comes in and then wants to regrade the pond or do anything, those are um, documents that we need to have to show them exactly what was approved and what was installed. So that would be at completion of the installation of the pond, those two sets of final aspects built will need to be submitted, one to the building department and one to the planning department. Okay, so, so basically we will have a pond prior to... As it's designed, that's why we ask for final aspects built for it. Okay. Um, so with all the design standards that are put forward, those will all meet the, the intent for the site plan, correct? Yes. All the setbacks and all of the requirements of the ordinance are being met, yes, but the as after it's installed, then we need final as built of what is actually there. So I noticed, I mean, there's quite a few notations that Manic Smith had that need to be changed, so we just need to make sure that all that's ready for compliance. Yes, and I believe that um, they have resubmitted already to Manic and Smith as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all. Any other questions? Your motion on the floor. Mr. Campreth. Uh, if I re if I notice correctly, I think your public hearing. Is it still open? No, we closed it. Closed it? Okay. Really, Brad, if you do this one, I'll do the next one. <laughs> I'm going to need some help. That's all right. <clears throat> so I'll make a motion to approve the special use um, at parcel number 58. Dash zero two dash zero one one dash zero three six dash two zero, known as thirty West Erie Road, Temperance, Michigan, for for the pond. Um, what do I add to the special use? The portion of the language of the ordinance in the packet that I I, I asterisked that. Um, Right there, yep. just from where it's asterisked. Okay. Planning Commission imposes after Friday in the use. No, that's not it, right? District. But okay. Planning Commission imposes after finding that the use is not injurious to the district and inverse and is not contrary to spirit and purpose of this ordinance, is not <clears throat> impairable with already existing use in the area will not interfere with the ordinarily developed of the area, would not be determinable to the safety or convenience of the vehicular of pedestrian traffic, will be served adequately by essential public facility and service, will be consistent in assuring that the general public health, safety, and welfare will not infringe it upon and will be in compliant with all township, county, state, and federal laws and regulations and which once approved shall be deemed to be authorized only by the specific use and shall expire and become null and void without further notice or action by the Planning Commission in case uh, where special improvements use has not been established within six months after the Planning Commission granted of the approval, therefore, or where the special approval use is continuous of census to exist for six consecutive months or for 18 months during any three-year period, and which may be revoked by the Planning Commission after it finds that any and all requirements of the ordinance and conditions of the approval are not being maintained. Thank you. Support. Okay, Mr. Covret, would you like to call the roll? Uh, Mr. Held. Aye. Mr. Covret votes aye. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Mahoney. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank I got you. your second, we we got oh, second one. One more. 
Sit tight. <laughs> I'll make a second motion to approve the site plan on parcel number 58-02-011-036-2030 West Erie Road, Temperance, Michigan. Uh, should special use and final site plan approval be granted, the motion should include that the approval shall be contingent upon addressing all comments in the Mannequin Smith Group, the Bedford Township Fire Department, letters of approval, meeting, meeting, and all requirements of the Monroe County Drain Commission in regards to soil erosion and sediment control and eagle permit. And per section 251-015, upon completion of work, two sets of final as built be submitted. Support. Okay, Mr. Kovrat, could you call the roll? Mr. Chair. Ms. Rector. Could I ask the commission to include the 100-foot um, rope be shown on the site plan that um, and the drive for the emergency access be clearly labeled on the final site drawings. Would you like that added to your motion? Yes, oh, friendly amendment. And I'll support that. Okay. Good. All right, Mr. Helm? Aye. Ms. Kovrat votes aye. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Mahoney? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Now you can have a good night. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, thank you very much. You jumped right in there. So there oh, I thought you meant. <laughs> Okay, moving on to item B, request for a sign waiver for Family Video 160, previously Family Video Store for Goodwill and a donation center in a C1 local business zoning district on parcel number 5802-027-009-10, otherwise known as 8167 Lewis Avenue, Temperance, Michigan. Ms. Rector. Okay, we hope this wasn't overly confusing <laughs> again the applicant is goodwill industries 8167 lewis avenue sign company is fast signs jr hop and jans and 5802027009101 c1 local business the applicant is requesting a sign waiver located on the corner of lewis avenue and dean road previously the family video store where two wall signs are permitted one on dean one on lewis the request is to install two additional wall signs on Lewis Avenue for a total of three wall signs, two located within the metal awning on the front of the structure and a wall sign on the north side to state donations of this on, the, on the structure. The parcel is zoned C1 Local Commercial Zoning District. Goodwill's business is divided into two sections within one unit, one for donation intake and the other for retail sales. The applicant has advised storefront receiving doors have been installed at the northeast end of the structure for the donation drop-off. The applicant is seeking to install two Goodwill, Goodwill wall signs to be located on the front of the building on Lewis Avenue, each measuring 48 feet in area and 3 feet in height. In addition, the applicant is proposing two additional wall signs on the northeast corner of the building, one on Lewis Avenue and one on Dean Road, to advertise for donations, each measuring 15 square feet in area and 1.5 and feet in height. Per section 419.22 states in a C1 local business district, one wall sign with a maximum of 50 square feet in area is permitted where the building has at least two sides, each of which has frontage on and faces a road or street right of way. There may be two wall signs, one for each of the two sides of the building, and each may have the maximum size allowed for one wall sign. Therefore, the applicant is seeking a waiver to permit two additional wall signs on Lewis Avenue one to advertise goodwill, total of two within the awning, and the second to advertise for donations, all on the north side. Therefore, an overall 111 square foot area of wall signs thus requires a 61 square foot area for the additional wall signs and to permit two additional wall signs to be installed. Having said that, I'm going to refer to the, just to give clarification, two of these will be on that awning peak and then this donation sign will all be on Lewis Avenue, and then one donation sign on Dean Road, just for clarification of all that language. The applicant is requesting to replace the insert in the existing monument sign, which measures 97 and an three quarters square foot area of signage and 23 square foot of base with an overall height of 10 and a half feet. 
Per section 419.22 states one monument sign in a C1 local business district is permitted up to 50 square feet in area plus 50 square feet of additional decorative structure of the monument sign and seven feet in height. Therefore, the applicant is requesting a three and a half foot height waiver and a 47 and three quarter square foot area waiver to utilize the monument sign. On June 5th, 2000, a sign variance was granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals to Family Video to allow for two wall signs on Lewis Avenue, as well to allow the monument sign with other stipulations that was created from the non-conforming pylon sign, which was then brought into compliance. However, the variance was granted solely to Family Video and therefore the applicant must request a sign waiver to utilize the existing monument sign. The applicant is also requesting to install a book mural insert into the existing light pillar located in the front of the store measuring 8 feet in height and 28 square foot overall in area. Should the request be considered, the following waivers are required. Permit a second and third wall sign on Lewis Avenue for goodwill and donation center use only. A 61 square foot area waiver for the two additional wall signs. A three and a half foot height waiver for the monument sign and a 47 and three-quarter square foot area waiver for the monument sign. Permit the book mural insert in the existing light pillar eight feet in height and 28 square foot in area. The following shall be considered for any inclusion in a motion to approve. A sign and electrical permit shall be obtained from Bedford Township. Waiver granted for this specific use. The applicant shall continue to maintain the entire perimeter landscape of the basin unless two feet wide growing in a healthy condition. And the applicant shall continue to work with the township to ensure placement of the sign meets all the requirements of this waiver. Um, and then just to touch base on the signs, this is the existing monument sign that is being proposed to be changed. It will say Goodwill Bookstore and Donation Center. I believe this location is only for books. And then I believe the mural that they're looking is going to look somewhat similar to this. However, Family Video used it as a light pillar only. That's all I have. I have a question. Um, will we be doing one motion or three motions? For one for wall signs, one for the monument, and then one I, for the pillar? I believe you concluded all in one because it's broke down pretty clear um, okay. with what each request is. Mr. Camper? You may want to advise the applicant of your shortage of your panel tonight, and that uh, would require a unanimous vote majority of the entire panel some of who aren't here tonight or you could defer to another day when there's more members present uh, Do you, can you state your name and address I'm sorry my name is J.R. Hoppin James I'm the owner of Fast Signs can you move the microphone up hello is this on it's on okay my name is J.R. Hoppin James I'm the owner of Fast Signs uh, we're in Monroe Michigan at 15 521 uh, South Dixie uh, and I'm representing um, the property owner and the tenant Goodwill Okay, and as Mr. Campreth indicated, we're three members short, so you're going to need a unanimous vote of the four members present tonight. You want to proceed? We would like to proceed. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Jr.? Do you know, are they only going to take book donations at this location? Uh, no, the, we, they will take all donations at this location. Um, but the retail side of the store will be a bookstore exclusively. So if someone donates a bicycle, it will go to another location. Has Goodwill done this anywhere else? I mean, they must they have, have done bookstore. Yes, they have. This is their new, <coughs> my understanding is that this is their new, con a, a new concept. Um, from a 30,000 foot view of Goodwill, um, they have no problem selling uh, everything that comes in um, what they need to do more is to is to get more donations to come in um, they've um, the, the director of Southeast Michigan used to run North Carolina and South Carolina <coughs> and he developed this bookstore concept which was just a big hit um, people hang out there the books move really uh, rapidly it becomes kind of a, a community gathering point if you will um, and that traffic is what generates the more donations on the donation side so they like to have those, even though they're slightly different businesses, they like them under the same roof. It is a, con to answer your question directly, it is a concept that's been tested and proven other places. I think it's kind of neat um, to see something like that moving to Bedford, because um, it really isn't a bookstore up here, to my knowledge. Yes. 
uh, not that I know of. Um, and Jody's done a great job of detailing the technical arguments. I've um, written a paragraph for each of our requests describing the logic behind them. If you'd if you'd be interested. I mean, personally, I, I think a lot of uh, town cities struggle with what do they do with these <coughs> defunct family videos, and how do you keep them from being an eyesore? And I hope when we talk about it, we understand. Yeah, there's you know excess amount of signs that are normally allowed, um, but if you leave it be, it's going to be its own eyesore. <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions for Jr. Mr. Steiner, just a couple of comments here. Um, obviously, you know, something like you said to, to take over a facility that is uh, empty and to keep it from being an eyesore and going into disrepair. Um, just seems like a lot of signage for one small corner. I mean, we're talking five large signs. Um, I mean, even the donations piece, I don't really know if that would, really would require one on the Lewis side as long as your doors are right there at the front corner. Uh, that part I don't know. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the goodwill sign on the awning, that's going to right away catch anybody's eye from all directions. Now that won't capture the bookstore portion. Um, the the uh, sign that you want to do the mural in, is is it going to be just eight foot tall? Or is that part of the variance? Because, I mean, that's a lot taller than just just the eight foot. I believe that's the portion that's illuminated is the eight foot of the sign, and that was what was on the last request. We're having them ask because they are wanting to put a mural of books in it, and to me that then indicates another sign where family video had it as just a backlight. Right. So um, I, the mural is existing. They're not making any changes to what's there, I don't believe. Um, but oh. we look at it. We looked at it from the planning aspect as it was going to be another sign of book donations, and not just a backlit for the lighting of the entrance to the building. Mm -hmm. I mean, because the overall height of that's probably probably what closer to twelve, fourteen yeah. feet total. Uh, our intent was to cover all of the glass block. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is. It will no longer, uh, if approved as written, it will no longer be backlit. It will be an opaque. Um, it, it's an opaque surface. So no lighting at all in that. Or? Correct. Anything else, Rick? Right now. No, go ahead, Tom. Mr. Crawford. Yeah. Again. Um, Definitely uh, nice to see the, the property being redeveloped <clears throat> and put back to use um, as as expressed by uh, Mr. Steiner. That's a lot of signage. <clears throat> um, it's a lot of waivers. It's a lot of signage. Uh, ten and a half foot height uh, on the monument sign. That's that's a. I mean, and I know it was a waiver was granted 22 years ago. But that was 22 years ago. Um, I, I just I can't get past that's a lot of signage for one property um, and, and granting a waiver to that extent um, I fear you know I'm always thinking about who's next what's next this will be used as kind of a benchmark for other waiver requests um, I, I just can't see it so my question is is this all or nothing or could we pick and choose if we so wanted to go that direction of what we were okay with or not okay with well, I believe they have submitted their request and their application, and this is their request. So it's all or nothing. Uh, I would say it's all or nothing. You also have to keep in mind the ordinance language, the controlling language is that the Planning Commission, in order to justify a waiver, finds that there, I don't know exact words, unique characteristics that weren't contemplated when the ordinance language was drafted would warrant uh, a waiver from the ordinance standards. So... I don't know if it happens in every waiver consideration, but you always have to keep those those findings in mind and uh, make it part of your motion, the reason why a waiver is appropriate. 
so I understand the concern um, for the uh, amount of signage, and if I may just kind of break these things apart, I'll start with the mural. Um, so regarding the glass and steel tower in the front of the building, Goodwill would like to save the expense of removing that thing and actually turn this into something interesting like an architectural <coughs> feature. As you can see in the picture, the proposal is to make it look like a tall bookcase, rep kind of representing the activity that's going on inside. Um, to quote my client directly, it'll be kind of cool. Uh, we consider this a mural, which in most other cities and townships would not require a permit. Um, we hope you guys see it that way as a mural more than a sign, uh, but at the direction of uh, people that know more than me, uh, we thought we should bring it here and, and technically make it approved. So we're hoping that isn't really considered a sign. Uh, regarding the donation signs at the northeast corner of the building, um, given that the building has essentially been divided in two, and this half will serve a different purpose than the bookstore, it really needs its own signage. A separate entrance has been created at that location, and due to the unique corner position, it really needs two signs, one facing north, one facing east, to help customers avoid confusion and hesitation, which is inherently dangerous to pedestrians. Um, they, uh, potential customers need to be able to find the correct door and park at the correct place. We also think this sign might help at the intersection, again, avoiding hesitation and confusion and helping the public get to the right entrance, the right side of the parking lot, and to the correct door. Uh, our argument is that good wayfinding signage improves safety. Will there be another door installed, or is it just the front door? There is another. The, another door it's has been installed. It's there already? No, it is there it's already. On the, that other one's on the plan. Did you see the drawing? I was asking about the donation door. Yeah, the donation door has been installed. And what's unique about that situation is that they put the donation door um, at, at, a, at a diagonal, but the roof line still comes out a, as a square. If the roof line was diagonal parallel with the door, it would be perfect. You just put the donation sign right above it. It's not. It, it, it comes out as a square, whereas the... Because that's actually the part that I was thinking too is about a diagonal, and because I couldn't really tell that this was done that way. But it'd be see. great if that roof line was on a diagonal. It is not, so that's what kind of necess necessitates that request. Can I ask if anybody has a specific problem with the with the um, obelisk in making that a mural? Is there any point of discussion with that? Because that, if you counted it, that makes us six signs. Yeah, well. So, um, it, it, before we go any further, and Marty, I'm going to defer to Mr. Kampreth here. And I know I'm thinking same as BZA, um, even though we're planning, just a thought here. I know that uh, some of the times under BZA, if an applicant decides to make a change and request something less than they requested. I don't know if that's something that, as you said, this is sort of what was presented. It's an all or nothing. And if the applicant in this case requested something less intrusive than what has been originally requested, can that be done? Or does it have to be yes or no on exactly what's been proposed? I would be comfortable if the applicant willingly uh, changed or reduced their request okay. uh, and, and the, had the, asked the Planning Commission to consider something less. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that because, I mean, I, I, as, as Mr. Mahoney said, we've got to, you've got to have all four of us say yes. Um, we're, I've heard, you know, some concerns Concern. from two or three of us here. I wouldn't want three S's and a no if that's the case when we don't have a full board. Um, so, but we want to do the right thing too. We want to try to make sure this business and, and the building is being able to be used. Um, but uh, I think the biggest concerns are the, you know, I could get by the monument thing probably. It's not lighted and things like that. But I think some of the building signage is probably excessive also since we've got a good size monument sign out front as well. I was going to propose we talk about each item and see if there's sticking points. And then we can try to resolve if there's any 
changes the applicant wants to make. To, to your point, the, we are flexible, and we would welcome the opportunity to work with you to find out a, a compromise that was passable. So can we start with the obelisk? Anybody have a problem with it? Mr. Chair, real quick. Mr. Coverett. Um, if <clears throat> Can the applicant at any time decide, you know what, I do want to wait, or are we already passed that? I believe, unless Mr. Kamprath has different, I believe we're already past that because he opted to move forward. Okay. All right, sorry. That's uh, okay. Just a point of question, if this motion or these motions do not pass, do we have the option to reapply with a full board? No. I believe yes. Okay. Fees, I don't know about the fees. I believe it would be a full new submittal. Which is $150? Yes. That, that would be no problem. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would not contest that. Okay, let's start with the obelisk. I don't have a problem with it. I like it. It makes it look better. It'd be a hardship for them to, to take it down, remove, remove it. I agree with that. I think it's, especially they're not going to light it. So it's part of the architectural of the building. Ms. Yeah. Coverett. So I would, I, <laughs> uh, of my concerns, uh, that w is on the lower end, um, and I'd be willing to, you know, consider that or approve that um, depending on, you know, the two goodwill signs on the building. The, the I'm, I'm really concerned about the height of the uh, monument sign. We'll get to it. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm not in a position to feel good about all of them, for sure. Mr. Steiner? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, like I said, it's not lighted, that one. If it was lighted, I'd, I'd probably think differently. But it's not lighted. I think it's it's fairly simple with what we're talking about doing with that one. Okay, let's move on to the monument sign, then. It's um, existing as it is, right? We're just changing the... Yes, I just have a short paragraph to uh, read about that. The monument okay. sign, my understanding is that the monument sign is slightly too tall for the location it's in. A previous tenant secured a variance. Um, we would like to save the expense of a new sign and a new foundation um, and, and utilize the current sign and frame. Uh, my client assures me that the money they're saving uh, by not redoing the sign will be used to promote the mission of goodwill, which is helping disadvantaged members of our community live in complete and independent lives. Um, and we are certainly not trying to gain any commercial advantage or we just want to use the sign that is there. Okay. That's the question. Mm -hmm. um, have you evaluated any potential modification to the existing sign to reduce the height? We have not evaluated that. Okay. Is it a steel frame? It is a steel frame. Uh, yes, it's an internally lit uh, steel frame. Um, you know, it can be done. Anything can be done. Um, it would require a significant investment on Goodwill's part to lower that thing. Uh, I think we need to lower it. Is it three feet? Approximately three feet. Yeah, again, I'm <clears throat> one of the factors I'm always considering is, is not you. It's not Goodwill. I look at your you know, a no-name entity standing here. I'm always concerned about what's next, who's going to look at this and who's going to come in and say, you just did this. And I, 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 just can't, I just can't, that height, I just can't get past that. So that, that, that's, a, that's a sticking point for me. Yeah, unfortunately, if my understanding is correct, that that was part of a deal from a previous tenant where something was going on and they put this there and it, it secured approval. So I, I just I don't know the history of it. I don't know why or how or where it came to be. We just adopted it. We, it, we just adopted it. Are you willing to modify the sign to get it below the height or get it to the height requirement? Uh, we we would consider that as part if there are no if that is the only sticking point. Of well, this tonight vote. it sounds like you're not going to get at least one vote. <laughs> There's no point in talking. I understand. So. Are we willing to reduce the height? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we're willing to reduce the height. K to what max height? Overall, seven feet in height. So he have to reduce it uh, one foot two inches. Am I reading this correctly? Three, three and a half feet. Yeah, because you got the base to include there too. Yeah. 
I'll let Jody answer technically. My understanding is that we were foot, uh, foot, a foot and a half too tall. Well, that base. was where you said the sign was. But remember, you put eight feet, but it ended up being it's eleven because it was this was all that was eight, and not this. We show it, it required a three foot height variance on your calculations that you sketched out. You have 24 inches of base and then 8 foot 6 inches of sign in the marquee. That is correct. So how much would you have to lower the sign? It's a 3 foot. 3 foot? I believe 3 feet it was the overall. So three, 3 foot in height. 3 and a half, three and a, right? 3 and a half, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Six, second paragraph, <laughs> not the first. <laughs> yes, and actually Mr. Hoppenjans did go out and actually um, you'll see this sketch in there is that showing that it's the Two, there's the 24 inches of base and then the height. <clears throat> my my fear is that um, this client will let that family video sign sit there, and now we've got a nice looking Goodwill Center refurbished, and they'll let that sign sit there. I, I don't know that that's what they'll do. That's my fear. So I'd like to know, um, I guess, Ms. Rector, if he wasn't, I mean, when they bought the property, was it inherent in purchasing the property they'd have to get this sign into compliance? Or what if he just left it? Well, if the variance, if the sign waiver is denied and the commission requires them to either take it down you can put conditions on it, um, but if the sign becomes dilapidated and an eyesore, the ordinance will go out and talk to the property owner. I don't believe Goodwill is going to own the building, so it will be a, become the property owner's issue. So they're leasing the property. They are leasing the property, yes. And I'm speaking a little out of school because of all the things we were concerned about, the height of that monument sign was not was not a detailed conversation I had with the I know and, and I'll tell you so I apologize for not like being totally for these kind of situations it's good there. to have the people who are going to ultimately have to bear the responsibility I mean, you're the sign company <laughs> you know personally I, I don't have a problem if it's been there like this for so long advertising videos and now it, it, this whole corner is going to be live and back up again you know it's extenuating circumstances, I guess. If, Mr. Steiner, do you have any comments about the monument sign? Well, I mean, obviously the height's going to make concern just about anybody when we're talking three to three and a half feet in height. Um, and again, I, I guess my concern too is where where this sign goes, and then the multiple signs on the building, four four separate signs. Um, I know you, you know, you mentioned talking about it individually, but I we can talk about them as a group too. But I mean, I know, but I'm just thinking, I don't want to rush anything tie, through. Tying one to the other in this case seems to make sense since there are so many uh, requested here. Um, Mr. Chair, if I could, Mr. Um, the some of the background on the pylons, it was a pylon sign, family video took the pylon down, made it into a monument sign, ordinance went out, and they had to come in for the sign waiver from the BZA at that time because that's what, when they brought the pylon down, they built around what was there, and that's why it was granted um, the sign waiver for family video only. Um, keep in mind, if Goodwill moves out and should the commission approve that sign, the next property owner is going to have the same concern because it's going to be for this use only, and then they are going to have to come in for a sign waiver unless the sign is brought into compliance or granted to remain. Just some thought for future. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that sign has to be brought down three feet, the um, monument sign. Can we go on to the three, wall sign? Three and a half feet. Right. Three, three and, and a half, is it? Yep. Uh, so are we at the, the Vino sign now? Yeah, we'll go to there next. Okay. How's that? So the uh, existing, I call it the Vino sign in front of this building. Is that what, not what you call it? 
I didn't know what to call it. It's the shape of a V. It's weird. It's weird. Um, the existing V no sign in front of the uh, building does provide an interesting architectural feature, but it really complicates the sign needs for this nonprofit organization. Uh, if it were flat, it'd be no problem. We'd have one sign. Um, so we're asking for a variant so we're allowed to put a sign on each side of the V, just like it was for family video. Uh, without the additional side on the south facing wall, Drivers would not have a clear line of sight identifying that front door. Again, increase, increasing hesitation, possible confusion, and maybe putting pedestrians at risk. In addition, it would simply look awkward and unbalanced to have a sign over there on that side and not one on the south side. In our opinion, this would be a negative visual aesthetic element in the community at an otherwise good looking corner and intersection. Uh, please understand that a second sign here is unavoidable due to the architecture of the building and that we're not trying to gain any type of commercial advantage. And I'll just make the comment, you're replacing what's already there, it just says something different. Correct. It's a cabinet that has a, polycarb a digitally printed polycarbonate face. I'm going to slide that out, slide a new one in. The lights currently work and they look good. So we are putting signs in where they currently are. <coughs> Yeah, and you know, I guess to Ms. Rector's point, I think when we get a new building, new signs, we we have to stick as closely to the the um, ordinances as possible. I mean, we're in a situation here where I, I think it's a great thing that somebody is occupying that building. It's not a CBD store; mm -hmm. it's not a hemp store. No, you it's going to be kind of actually. Cool. I think people will like coming here, and it's I mean, obviously helps the community. Um, that sort of thing. There's all kinds of reasons I think we can offer some slack here and something we can justify down the road when someone says, hey, my sign, why can't I have it be 30% bigger? Well, you know, we're trying to put, we're putting a Band-Aid over a sore. You're still going to look at it. And whoever's been around for 20 years knows what that building was. But anyway, how do you guys feel about it? Ms. Corvette. Yep. Mr. Chairman, um, <clears throat> Uh, well, I certainly understand that. Again, um, <laughs> it, 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 that's a slippery slope, I think, um, because anyone can come in and just start, you just did this, you just did that. Someone can come right across the street. Um, you know, sound planning is not looking at who it is, what the entity is. It's looking at, you know, the actual requests, et cetera. And, again, Goodwill, obviously fantastic organization, no, no, no ill will whatsoever. Um, but I'm, I'm concerned about the next person who comes right across the street and points across the street and said, you guys just did this. It, it just, I get it, it's existing, and re we're replacing signs that are already there, but that, that doesn't justify the means that just because it's there, we have to continue to just promote this, and the next time it's not right. goodwill, someone else buys the property, and now we have to deal with it again. At some point, we've got to bring the signage into compliance. Um, and I'm not saying we're drawing the line here by any means, but that, that, th those are the things that go through my head. And the, it, I think Mr. Steiner mentioned this earlier. The signage out on the uh, monument sign, very clear, you know, assuming, you know, if the applicant wants to reduce the, the, the height and, and the sign is, is as presented, maybe just a little shorter. Um, I, I, I struggle to know or understand why we have to have two additional goodwill signs that say the same thing that's on your monument, monument sign um, not too far away. It's just a lot of signage that I, yeah. I just can't get past. So three points to address your concern. Um, the, uh, because it's a bookstore, uh, the client's concerned that we get that word bookstore out there as much as we can. Um, the second point I would make is I, I empathize with the four of you because you're in a difficult situation, but you're there by design. The, the ordinance is written for a best case scenario. Um, when the best case scenario doesn't quite fit, creates a hardship, was written before the ordinance, that's why they put humans on a committee to use uh, sound judgment. Are we taking this too far? Are, is this organization taking advantage of these rules? Are they trying to do something that really uh, was not the intent of the, building, uh, of the ordinance? Or are they just trying to make good on a budget uh, with the building that they're there? So I, I, I would... I, I would encourage you to, yeah, these are tough decisions, and yeah, it'd be a lot simpler if everything was just brought up to code every time it came around, but um, this committee is designed exactly for that. Um, and I've forgotten my third point, so. Mr. Steiner, how do you feel about the Chevron sign? 
Um, and I think one of the reasons that this sticks out so much different than the family video is because it uh, has such a higher contrast compared to the family video where, you know, they had the red lettering and it sort of blended in with the building part part way. Not to say that that was necessarily a good thing, you know, now when it's lighted, that's a different story. Um, but in this case, I don't know if, uh, I mean, I know the insert would have to be the same. She said they slide in and slide out of there. But I don't know if the sign, the signage area itself, the white portion and the blue portion, um, if there was even a black frame uh, outlining that. So, and I don't know how the board would feel about considering saying if you cut, uh, that's 36 inches high. So if you cut that to say 24 inches, uh, you know, do uh, uh, six inches top, six inches bottom, like a, a black border, consider, maybe consider the lighted part that's going to really show the white and the blue. Take the signage size, you know, size of it down that way, length as well, um, whatever that might be. Something to think about. I mean, because it, it is, it just, it just looks like it's almost overkill, uh, and I think the color and contrast has a lot to do with it. It does, and that's uh, a, a dichotomy for me because the client says, "I want that sign to pop." So I'm like, "Great, what are your colors? Here's the best way to do it." You and, but a, you know what? You, you, you made know. a good point. Their color contrast is going to pop. It's going to pop. If yep. it's going to pop, it's going to pop whether it's small or huge as all get out. So uh, that's partly where I struggle with this because it just, it just, and it, to me, it, it almost pushes that to the sore thumb look, you know. You just, uh, all these signs and they're, they're all going to be bright. You, you, um, are, you are not incorrect. And I did remember my third point, um, the uh, <laughs> donation signs. Um, the lettering on the donation sign is one point, uh, one and a half foot. Uh, so that's 18 inches. Um, okay. I know we've blown them up for the pictures that are in front of you just for clarity, uh, but those donation signs are nowhere near um, the visual impact that this big Goodwill sign has on Lavino's. So they're not, like the, the picture we've got of that on the building on both sides, it's not quite scaled to the building itself? It is approximately scaled to the building, but it's nowhere near scaled to the picture that you have right next to it of Goodwill. That one's really... Uh, that one's yeah, really the, the V up. sign. Yeah. yeah, the measurement the the measurements on what we've submitted are 100% accurate. The scale and ratio was my graphics designer's best estimate of that space. Um, Attempted to be at scale, but probably not if you put a millimeter ruler to it. Let's go right. Yeah, and and <laughs> the visual, the pop, and and, and that. Definitely, right? It, 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 that's going to uh, happen with all that. I, I just keep looking at the number of waivers, and yes, you're getting, if we were to grant it, uh, the waiver request, you're getting lots of pop at the cost of multiple waivers, right? So it's, it's one thing if it was correct more in line. I'm not saying perfectly in line, but okay. it's like... So a there's a lot of waivers. Um, it is a lot of waivers, about. and I, I appreciate you're giving this full consideration. A different way to look at it is they've put a dividing wall down the center of this building. Had they added a bathroom to this, we only need one waiver because we'd be allowed a sign. Two buildings. Because it's two buildings, now you're allowed two signs. One sign has two street accesses, so there's your additional sign. So if, and they're not going to do this, but had they put a bathroom in there, this sign request looks different, and that just that's just another, it just seems like, just, I, I see it. You're just trying to make. Way to think about it. You're just trying to make do with what's there trying to, and trying to make it fit. Right. And the donation center doesn't need, really need a bathroom. There's only three or four employees that work there at any given time, and the bathrooms that are in the in the bookstore center, they're really cool. We got these kind of graphics that are going on. And they're big. They're ADA compliant. The whole works. There was just no sense in putting more bathrooms. If I had any objection, it would just to reduce the donation sign to one, but that's. I just wonder why they, because it would have cleaned up a lot of this, why they wouldn't have just put those new doors right on the Lewis Avenue side instead of the corner. Um, I mean, you can't answer that. That's I cannot answer that's that. There, yeah. you know, but that would have cleaned up a lot of it. Or fix that roof line. Or, or, or fix that roof line. Or clip the roof, clip yeah, the corner. Clip the well, see, that's the other thing I thought is 
to me, if they were doing the constructions for the new doors, why wouldn't you just clip the corn? Uh, or you said it maybe it'd have been cheaper to add a bathroom. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, we'd still be standing here talking about at least one of the signs. Just, so yeah, but only one. It doesn't uh, eliminate the whole thing. Um, yeah, I think the um, – I, I didn't anticipate this kind of um, resistance or, or, or I guess resistance is a fine word. Um, I think the client thought that, oh, let's go apply for the, uh, you know, for the waiver kind of clear cut it's it's kind of similar to what we did at the Seacor store uh, where we understood the logic between the two different businesses if you will um, and I just don't know what the expense of cutting that corner or redoing the roof line permitting uh, we'd still have to get a permit for all of that stuff too so I can't really answer that I'm just babbling yeah, you're getting into major costs to straighten that change a roof line the trusses and yeah that's that's why I I, I don't redoing what's there ironically the southeast corner uh, the garbage truck smoked that and actually made it kind of diagonal so they had to rebuild it out to make the corner had the whole building had the garbage truck hit the other side this would have been a no-brainer <laughs> not our luck today well, it creates a true hardship having to make all the modifications so we can accommodate the sign ordinance I think that was their logic yes and we've had a lot of discussion and input from everybody on revising the sign ordinance, haven't we? A lot of participation. Yes, but in this case, I would say this would not be something we would desire to move forward in changing the ordinance to allow this many wall signs. <laughs> right. Just my opinion, but I, I agree. This is kind of a... Mm -hmm. Between Mr. the Cabrera. building and the same organization running kind of two different... So, so just, again, we stated it before, but I know we've had a lot of discussions since then. <clears throat> we're we're going to move forward and, and have a motion, and you always have that opportunity to come back with the full board. So um, I might I might or might not be the, the one naysayer, um, but with the full board, that might be okay. So. Mr. Chair. Mr. Helm. The, where they added the two doors were the donation signs, and I know it's up on the front face shirt. How much room, or you probably don't know, between that door and the bottom of the soffit? Or is it pretty tight to the top? I guess where I'm going with this is can we do a donation sign above that door? I know it's going to be tucked in. It's probably only about eight inches. Uh, yeah. Our window film... I just didn't know if, you know, if that's 10-foot ceilings, you put 6-foot-8 doors in there, there's... Or yeah. window film on the doors saying donations. Would be a would be an option. Uh, so to answer your question directly, I have the same information okay. as you do in front of that. And so, yeah, my guess would be the same as Jody's, 8 to 10 to 12 inches. Right, so not, not enough to put a sign. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had not thought just, about that. I had not even evaluated that in my head. So, um, so is it an option, window film versus two donation signs? Uh, no. Window film is an option. So we can eliminate that part of your application? I, I think given the number of concerns that are here, I think that we want to um, proceed with this motion as written. I, I got a number of things that I need to talk to my client about about whether they're willing if it you know uh, about whether they're willing to um, because each one of these things that you're suggesting are good ideas but there's a counter argument to it because you're saying well don't put the sign up there put it on the door well we're already allowed to have signage on the door without permit requests so we were already going to put logo name hours you know the traditional vinyl graphics on the front door. We were talking about the donation doors, not the, the front door. Correct, yeah. yeah, that's the only doors I'm suggesting. I mean, it's your your building. I'm just saying it's one spot where we can eliminate two waivers. Well, keep in mind he's only that in that specific portion. He is only asking for the one donation sign on Lewis Avenue. He is permitted. They are permitted the donation sign on Dean Road. So you, if you were to eliminate the donation sign, it would just be the additional sign on Lewis Avenue. He is, per, They are permitted one on Dean Road because it has two road frontages. Sure. And okay. I'm just suggesting it maybe it might help make the rest of this more 
amenable or palatable for the people in, on the board. Are those doors eight foot across approximately? Are they four foot doors each? I'm sorry, I don't know that. Because I mean, I'd be happy to go measure them, but I no, I'm just, I'm just guessing that. they might be four foot or close to it. Um, Cause that's another thought you're talking about wraps and different things like that. What, what if the sign was split across the doors at the bottom? Um, that's another thought too. And then, then if there's one for Mr. Camper. Then where does that sign fall? If they did do that, do you say, do they get to say, well, it's on, it's on the side. Or do you say it's on both? What do you, how would that one fall into play? <laughs> even, even if it was the roof line, you know, we talked about that, which is very expensive, but what if they want to do that? You know, where, where do you call it? <laughs> There's no good answer on that one, is there? No, it would probably be considered the one allowable sign on the north side of the building, Dean Road. Okay. Because, again, that, that may be the way an applicant would apply for that, too, is if they did that and say, that's my one sign on the north side. And I think there's a little, I, I don't have a lot of experience in this, but I think there's a little difference between, like, the technical legal aspect. Could we put this in front of a judge and get a ruling and blah, blah, blah? Or can we come in front of an organization that's designed to use judgment, you know, d you know determine different factors and subjectivity? We, we want to play nice. We don't want to go to the, well, technically, we, we would really, we're not going there. We're not going there. We're going to come in front of this group and find the right answer. But it would be interesting to argue whether a 45 degree angle is some is close enough to parallel. So um, getting back to my suggestion about rem removing the donation signs as drawn here and maybe putting donations on the doors, would that make this more palatable to you guys, what they're asking? And if we reduce the height of the uh, monument sign? Well, or like they said, you they could just we could just remove the donation on the Lewis side. The other one could stay because that one is permitted. So, I mean, the whole concern is to minimize eyesores and flashy stuff on buildings. So that's why I'm suggesting remove donations on, even though they're allowed to have one, but just to put it on the door, so it won't be as flashy on that corner. The triangle or uh, roof. You know, that's the only bone of contention here. We're all right with the monument. We're going to, we've already said he's got to reduce the height of the monument sign. So it comes down to the donations thing, uh, signage. Well, we did talk about the size of the V's, uh, the V sign too. And that one too, so. Um, I mean, honestly, I think that uh, he made a good point. They may want to just say, you know what, guys, proceed with it as written. If they get to the know, they'll he'll talk to the client, decide what they want to come back with, or, I mean, I, I don't know. It doesn't sound like I mean it's not fair to him. I think to put him in a position to say, okay, I'll make all these agreements, and then Goodwill says, no, I don't agree with that. Now, granted, he could do that, and Goodwill could just say, I'm not going to do it, and then they don't get anything. They'd have to come back anyway. So it, it's. Uh, if he does have to go back, at least he'll have an idea of where we stand and what we're willing to give them, right? Yeah, I think he's got that either way. Um, is there a motion on the floor? I think for right now, if, if, if we're going to go for an all-in, I think uh, I'll make a motion that we deny the all-in request for uh, all five signs along with the uh, mural sign as presented. I'll support that. I'm just trying to think about how this should be voted on. <laughs> Would it be better just not to have a vote if there's no motion, then there's nothing to vote on? Well, Mr. Steiner made a motion to deny the request. So you'd either vote, if you support the motion, you would vote yay. And if you reject the motion, then you would say nay. And what if the vote's split? 
It goes it, 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 he unanimous. needs, it would unanimous. fail. It okay. has to be unanimous. Okay. Way. So the motion was to deny, correct? Yes, correct. correct. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Kovrat, can you call the roll? Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Kovrat votes aye. Mr. Helm. Nay. And Mr. Mahoney. No. Okay, it, we're split even, so the motion dies. Is it possible at this point to ask for a uh, motion for any of the individual components, uh, for example, the mural? One, it, it's all one process, so it, it's a, it's an all or nothing process. So we we can't legally split it out. Now, if if it was something where everything was requiring all separate motions and all separate motions were made, then we might be able to come back with a second motion on certain things, but. It's, it's an all or nothing presentation. It, it, I'm, I'm just asking, it appeared as though the decision that this was an all or nothing was made this evening. Can I ask for clarification if that is still accurate or unchangeable? I guess I'm not sure what your question is. I think you have to reapply and then you'll change what you ask for on your application. Is that correct, Mr. Camper? Well, Given what we've talked about, what you think we're willing to accept. Yeah, I, I think the action has been decided on the request, the wholesale request. As a whole, yep. And uh, to now go back and try and piecemeal it, you can have discussion on it with them, but I, I don't think any further action should be taken. So if he comes back and reapplies, it could have all four items, but he might tone down or say, we'll, we'll reduce the height of the sign. We'll do this, we'll do that, given what he learned tonight, correct? He can modify what he asked for. I mean, they could they could come back with exactly the same thing if we say, okay, there's a full board. Take a chance that we get a full board and we get the majority four. But they might get the same result. They might come back and say, you know what? We listened to the board's concerns. We want to make some modifications. Uh, we'll we'll reduce this or reduce that to get closer to the the compliance part. They could do that too. And when again, do when do they plan to open? Uh, yeah, before Christmas. They're yeah. So what they will likely do is just move forward with what they are allowed to do. Without a variance. In bringing the monument sign into compliance. Well, um, yeah, that's going to have to be done later. Um, or yeah, the, if they choose to modify the monument sign. And bring it down. Then I don't need to be in front of the variance board. I don't need to be in front for of that the item. That would be compliant. Mm -hmm. If we don't put that fourth sign, you know, we'll put the one donation sign on, and probably not the other. Now we're back into compliance. I got to think through each of these, but I'll work with Jody to make sure that we're in uh, in compliance. And that's kind of why I wanted to circle back around on the the mural. That's the only one that we can't get ourselves into compliance without your help. And that's the unfortunately coolest part of this whole process. Well, we all thought that was a nice thing, and I don't think any objected to it in the end, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to say. Um, I mean, I, I think what I've heard this evening is if the monument sign was brought down, if the donation on the east wall was eliminated, those two right there go away. Those, those variances go away. So the major things are, I shouldn't say major things, the major thing is the V sign. And I, you know, I don't know what the rest of the board feels, but in my mind, the monument sign is a very small thing. I don't know what, the, what everybody else thinks on that. but You mean as far as letting it go? Yes. As is? I yes. have to no me, problem that's, with that. That's a very small issue. Again, if it was lighted, I'd, I'd look at that completely different. Did I understand that correctly? That the 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 mural the the the, the mural that's, that's my opinion is a small issue with you. To me, that's a small issue. Well, we you, you said that you said monument. Said Did monument. you mean the mural? I meant the mural. I'm okay. okay. I understood right. what you meant. I just <laughs> yeah. I, I was mean, scratching my head there for a <laughs> second too. <laughs> yeah. I mean that that one's a smaller issue for me. Um, yeah, and I, I said the same when I first started. Was out of everything, and we talked through it all. Right, the the, the mural was the least of my concerns, so to speak. Yeah, because if it was lighted, then you've got six separate lights if you did everything. Uh, we would all agree with that. Yeah, yeah. that would be a little too much. 
then it's no longer a mural. It, it's a sign. When you put a light behind it, it's a sign. Right. Right. If it's painted on a wall. I'll... All right. Well, thank so you. I appreciate your consideration, gentlemen. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item 10, public comment. Does anybody in the public want to speak? <laughs> okay, we'll move on to item 11, information. Ms. Rector. As of now, we will not be having a meeting on Jan December 28th, which is two weeks from tonight. Everyone have a very Merry Christmas. And the next meeting is January 11th. And... As of now, we will be having that meeting. Okay. When is your posting, uh, when is your date for submittal of information for a December <coughs> meeting, if, if that were to happen? To get on a meeting is the Tuesday the week before. So the 3rd, January 3rd, would be the deadline by noon to get on the meeting for de uh, January 11th. Out on December. Oh, December yeah. would be the Tuesday before. I don't know okay. the date of. The 20th. So... Technically, if he got with his client, they could come back by the 20th and submit. Keep in mind, we try not to bring only a sign waiver because it's $150 and it does not cover, but right. yes. Okay. okay, item 12, commission staff comment. I'll start with you, Mr. Steiner. Nothing additional tonight. I'll say just Merry Christmas to everybody. Ms. Corbett. Same. Merry Christmas. Everyone enjoy the holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everyone. Yep. Hope everyone has a happy holiday. All right. <laughs> nice job on the packet, by the way, Katrina. Nice job. Okay. Um, we stand adjourned. It is 8 13.